be viewed as uh, would be viewed both materially and dematerially, of course. And uh, my point is not to evaluate the material uh, part of it, because it uh, would work from the value of the paper when uh, where it's printed to the, to the priceless uh, height of a supposedly new uh, manuscript, original manuscript by Bach. Imagine that tomorrow in Leipzig they find a new manuscript of Bach, for instance. But the, uh, my point is, of course, the, the immaterial, the artistic value of a piece of music. And uh, what kind, really, what kind of criteria would, uh, should we use to find it, to find the artistic value of anything, actually, in our case of a musical piece? Because uh, uh, we must be as objective as possible, since music, as many things, is very objective, very subjective, very subjective. What makes a musical piece uh, good or not good or rubbish or better, worse than another piece? First, let's consider just to exclude one extreme case. Uh, just consider a musical piece which is uh, a sheer imitation or very trivial, too naive or a combination of uh, cries and uh, noises, worse than Xenakis. So we must exclude such a case. Uh, but uh, there we, are, we lead ourselves into a vicious circle because we are talking about something which is not music and so we must uh, exclude that possibility from the beginning. So before anything else, let's uh, point out what music consists of in its, in its uh, bare essentials. Music is music consists of three elements uh, that are again three nice Greek words. Rhythm, melody, and harmony. Uh, very briefly, I will remind to you uh, what each one means. Rhythm, technically speaking, is not how fast or how slow a piece is, but it is in a, a, a score, in a musical score. I will uh, design something for you in a moment. It is the uh, first of all to write music that is convenient to write and to read. Uh, perform, we must divide it in bars. Bars are the minimum, uh, the essential, well, yeah, the, the minimum, more uh, convenient parts in which we must divide the musical piece so that we can find our way through its counting, to count it, to divide it, the meta, Greek the bars. So in each and every bar there are some notes of different values, sometimes of the same value. Anyway, the sum of all notes, of all notes in each and every bar, the sum of it is the rhythm of the musical piece. For instance, we have, this is the stave, this is a G key, and without the G key, now music can be without any key, I mean without a key, uh, either this one or uh, the F key or the three uh, C keys in uh, English this is a G in Italian, this is a sol. Anyway, without a key we do not have a reference point. I mean if I ignore this and I write this, this is nothing. But now with the reference point, this is a la, uh, a. Well, three quarters, for instance, is an indication of rhythm. Three quarters means that in each and every bar, like that, the sum is three quarters. This is its duration, not absolute, 
we'll come to this later on. Its relative duration is, this is called a, a half, and uh, its uh, relative value, its relative value is a half of a bit. <coughs> and uh, this is called a quarter. Its relative duration is one fourth of a bit. So their sum, their sum is three quarters, right? Is it clear? Okay. So the rhythm is just the the sum of the values in every bar, in each and every bar. And it is not how uh, how fast or how slow a musical piece a piece must be uh, read and performed. Sum of sum. Sum of time value. Pardon? The sum of time value. These are. That means that. Uh, uh, the sum of values. The sum. The sum. Yeah, a relative value. You said. This value refers. Sum. Uh, oh, what the value? The time. Time value. Relative time value. Right. 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 Okay. By definition, eh? by definition. Well, in each bar, in each bar, per bar, if you like, um, the absolute time is something different. Something different. The absolute time is usually, usually, sometimes it is omitted, but it should be. If, for instance, in any uh, beginning of a score, there is an uh, uh, normally, usually an Italian word here, which says, for instance, allegro. Allegro means that the piece is vivid. Allegro does not mean fast. It means lively, joyfully. But as a consequence, it tends to, to mean uh, rather fast. But that doesn't say how fast. Normally, it is an indication, above or here somewhere, which says, Order equals 120. That is the absolute time, which means in every minute, if we play this piece, this value, the value of one quarter, equals uh, rather uh, must be repeated 120 times in a minute. For instance, if we see our uh, second, our second. These are the seconds, right? I follow the second time. So it's 60 times, right? If I double it, this is 120. So it's the absolute time. This indication here uh, shows us the absolute time. And this indication, together with this, shows the, the mood. No, well, this does not show the mood. It shows something very specific. This one shows the general mood. Uh, it is rather a, uh, an indication of uh, how the performer should feel when he tries to interpret the music. Well, the melody is, of course, the way a monophonic, a single tune proceeds. A single tune proceeds in a succession, in a succession of uh, notes, upwards, downwards. However, it proceeds. This is called the melody. So, melody is the way, uh, uh, the way a single voice proceeds. A single voice. It's monophonic music. So, melody is related to monophonic. And accordingly, harmony is the way two or more voices are combined together. So we have polyphony, polyphonic. Well, these are the three basic elements of music. That does not mean that if a music is not, um, that doesn't have two, at least two voices, it is not music. Could be just one singer. And could be singing a divine melody, melody. But of course I am implying that uh, a musical piece should have some of the, definitely, it's indispensable that it should have some of these uh, elements, maybe all three of them, maybe all three of them. Uh, as to what the combination is, well, music, of course, has 
you will agree, I believe, is not a matter of uh, recipes. There's not a definite combination. There's not a matter of percentage. Usually, I mean, no, no art could be such a matter of percentage. And uh, if there is a recipe, if there is not a recipe, I mean, what could that be? It is a matter of inspiration. Inspiration is a matter of chromosomes developed in a favorable environment, as always. What else? And uh, some, uh, I believe, that was Yasser Haifet, the late violinist, said that uh, music is 20% inspiration and 80% perspiration. He meant by that that it's not easy to become a musician of his uh, posture, anyway, of his height. You know, the violinist, yes, I have it. Anyway, the late great. So, even if a musical uh, work meets or exceeds uh, uh, certain standards, certain minima, as we say in ABC, and uh, even if it contains these three basic elements, which properties, which are the properties that make it good or bad? Music, as I mentioned before, is very subjective. And uh, what is good, even what is divine uh, for uh, somebody's ears would be unbearable for somebody else's ears, like cabriolet. Well, it's very subjective. Then a dead end. Well, not a dead end, actually. It is always the way old Socrates put the whole thing. It is not a matter of our subject. It is a matter of how subjective we are, which is very aristocratic in its very core, of course, because he said that all opinions do not weigh the same. It is a matter of who the judge is as well. Not only this, but this as well, who the judge is. In other words, in other words, no layman could judge a case with the objectivity of the specialist. Well, that's, I hope it's agreed. However, however opinionated, stubborn, eh? the, the layman could be, could become. But what does that mean in case of music? Does that mean that uh, the, the ordinary, uh, the layman, ordinary people who are not uh, musicians, as I am, are not entitled or are not even allowed to like music? Well, of course not, of course not, because uh, that would be very unrealistic. And uh, that uh, even perhaps uh, only musicians are the, the faultless, the impeccable, uh, the, the paragons of uh, judgment. Of course not. Because which musicians? Me or the other one? It's not that easy. But of course there is a general uh, level difference between a layman and a specialist. So let's not deprive music of its very nature, and its nature is that music attends, music is aimed directly to the soul to the, to, and to the mind of the listener, uh, whoever it is, layman or not layman. And uh, well, as I said before, it would be unfair, unrealistic to ignore or to oppose that fact. But the record companies make good advantage of it, of course. They use uh, every means of uh, commercial propaganda, uh, pictures, sex, everything, to instigate their axiotomo pelatia, to instigate their targets, so that they buy records. And nobody, I mean, uh, within, uh, within the, records, uh, the record industry's uh, world, nobody's uh, preoccupied with, uh, with its quality, of course, of uh, the product's quality. Well, music is far too complicated a field for a classification of the kind. The higher the sales, within time still, the higher the sales, the, the better the product. But, uh, well, if, if we think this way, we could say that uh, Mozart, for instance, sells 200 years after his death, and he sells good enough, I believe. But if somebody points out that perhaps Beatles, well, more recent than Mozart, sell, I don't know the figures, perhaps they have sold better. Even Michael Jackson, Madonna, anyone. That makes, does that make them better than Mozart? Well, no, definitely not. But uh, 
duration in time in combination in a conjunction, a conjunction with a, a level of sales are not factors that can be ignored, of course, but especially the latter, the, the level of sales, the number of sales is not an artistic factor at all. Of course it is not. Uh, if we are to approach the theme from a different the, the topic from a different angle, we could refer to the to three factors which uh, define the value of anything in the world. Anything. Well, no, not actually, in everything, in this world. At the end. Yes. Uh, everything is valuable or not according to its rarity, to its usefulness. Or subjective reasons. Fact, reason. Anyway. Let's put some objectives. Uh, well, mainly these uh, parameters, these uh, factors, refer to material things. Mainly, mainly, but they can be viewed, they can be looked at accordingly uh, to, to accordingly to fit our case. Uh, first, rarity. A musical piece is rare, provided it is not an imitation. Keep that in mind, the word imitation. That would be the final uh, Lydian stone in my presentation. Well, if something is not an imitation, it is rare. It is even more than rare. It is unique, a musical piece, I mean. Uh, usefulness, uh, that could be viewed in many ways. A uh, musical piece is useful psychologically, psychically, it, uh, even it can help uh, plants grow or it can uh, help tame animals and uh, it is useful uh, for it is useful materially financially for the performer for the for the composer for the music company and so on and uh, it uh, enhances <coughs> people when they listen to it provided they like it of course definitely and of course it is uh, not very unuseful to the record companies but in this sense in this sense we must be careful because water is more useful to maintain life and if we judge things too much materially two musical pieces are better than one because they are two well let's skip that let's skip that i mean subjective factors subjective factors we must think of any until now i didn't say anything important I just excluded some <laughs> possibilities. So what makes, actually, what makes the difference? It is that word I referred uh, to before. Uh, to stay as objective as possible, as objective as possible in such a general and perhaps theoretic case, the first property a musical piece must have is its originality. If it is duplication, if it is uh, imitation, if it is stolen, in other words, it worth, it's worth nothing. If I write tomorrow uh, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony in a different key, just in a different key, will be beautiful music again, but won't worth a dime, because it would be an imitation. So the first property, and th this is detectable, this is not very easy if the origin, if the source is not very well known, but Technically, it is detectable. If you refer to sources, you can find whether something is stolen or not. Well, it's originality. Let me write that down. But where? It's originality. Well, and that is uh, as objective as uh, possible, as uh, I said before. If not, if it is not original, 
it lacks any value, it lacks any value. Uh, Echo, Umberto Echo says in his uh, Nome de la Rosa that every book is based on uh, another book. Well, that is, uh, that has a very good amount of truth. It is inevitable in a way, but um, a little bit exaggerated. Of course, everything is based on uh, history, on, on something older. But an artistic creation, though, an artistic creation, however conscious of the past can be, must be inspired. And when I say inspired, so let's put that inspiration, inspiration is a second quality, not second class quality actually. When I say inspired, inspiration uh, means that it brings forth new ideas. New musical ideas. So it's related to something new. Uh, inspiration has nothing to do with uh, sheer imitation, of course. Inspiration, uh, after all, is the quintessence, quintessence, fantasia, of music. Well, in the aftermath of the above criteria, one must take into account how elaborate, how elaborate a musical uh, creation is. Elaborate, I don't mean that it must be complex, complicated, because complication is not quality uh, just for the sake of it, for the sake of complication. It could be a musical piece that is very elaborate, but it, it is simple, or it seems simple. So, uh, simplicity as a result of elaboration is a golden rule. Simplicity as a result of elaboration. Uh, for instance, Vivaldi's music, Vivaldi's music, the Four Seasons, the other day. It looks very simple. It looks very simple, very digestible. It is, but uh, it, is, it was not composed just like that. It is simple because there is an elaboration behind it to be or to, to look, to, to give the impression of simplicity because not many simple things can you, not many simple, simple things can you find just like that. You must elaborate a lot. And um, so, let's put the third property. Elaborate, elaborate in the sense of, um, uh, it's related to structure, right? To structure, to the architecture. And let's put in parentheses, not complex, not necessarily complex. Pardon? The time is over. Yes, I'm finishing. So, in a, a prominent musical piece, no superfluous elements, uh, no uh, too many elements can be included. Nothing casual, otherwise the edifice will crumble, the edifice uh, will collapse. And uh, as a conclusion, well, a conclusion I can uh, repeat these properties, the originality, the inspiration, and the elaboration in the sense not of complexity, but of good structure, which is again a matter of inspiration. And the final note about whom I mean uh, specialist. I don't mean a critic, a music, uh, musical critic that has not, that is not a musician, or has has never been a musician, because uh, this uh, this could uh, uh, keep him in a, uh, forbidden distance from his object. A, mu a musical critic, a music rather, a music critic, should be a musician himself, not to play ten instruments, but to be an active or to have been an active musician. Otherwise, he cannot, he cannot um, judge what he's dealing with. Well, that was about it. Thank you very much. Thank you.